I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. Today I have the honor of speaking with the Ambassador of Japan to Ukraine, Ambassador Shigeki Sumi. Hello, Mr. Ambassador. Welcome to UATV. Thank you, Alex, for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. This year in Ukraine is the year of Japan. Would you be able to tell us what that is? Uh, the, as you know, the, this year, Japan and Ukraine commemorate the 25th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations. And then last year, when the president, uh, Poroshenko, visited Japan in April, uh, President Poroshenko and the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe agreed to have a year of Japan in Ukraine uh, for this year. And this is really special because this year, not only the Japan, but uh, uh, all other uh, did have a, a establishment of diplomatic relations 25 years ago. So among those, uh, uh, we are very, very uh, honored that the president, uh, especially, specifically, a pointed uh, uh, Japan uh, to have a year of Japan here in Ukraine. And so the idea of the year of Japan is to let the, not only the leadership of Ukraine, but, uh, you know, people, I mean, uh, in a village and, uh, you know, towns and all over Ukraine do know what is Japan, what the Japan is doing with Ukraine, and uh, uh, what is our, our, uh, the close uh, relations uh, these days. So this is the purpose of the year of Japan here. In what are Ukraine. some uh, cultural or even educational events that are taking place to create the bond between Ukraine and Japan? Uh, I think there are uh, many programs uh, are taking place, and it's not limited to the city of uh, uh, Kiev, but all over Ukraine. For example, uh, now Japan do have a, a 2,500 sakura planting uh, project all over Ukraine. The idea is, because sakura is very popular in Ukraine, so let 2,500 sakura tree be planted in all over Ukraine before the end of this year. And uh, uh, good news is, uh, uh, on top of the Japanese government donation, that is amount around 1,000 sakura tree, uh, we, I mean, the Embassy of Japan got a, a lot of requests from many towns and cities and villages. Uh, which saying they wanted to have a, 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 a sakura planting a, a, a project before the end of yeah where can we get the sakura and if we do that uh, uh, could you come to the you know the, the this uh, uh, ceremony uh, so uh, I hope that uh, before the end of this year we could have a 2,500 sakura planting mm -hmm. of course on top of that already we have a lot of projects such as the very famous Japanese ukiyo-e exhibition, which already took place in Kiev and uh, Lviv. And then uh, uh, in uh, uh, October, uh, we will have a very famous Japanese traditional puppet called the Bunrak. One puppet is manipulated or handled by three people. It's the most elaborate uh, puppet, but show goes back three, four hundred years in Japan are coming. Uh, I think they will have this uh, demonstration again, not only in, in Kiev, but Donipro and Lviv. So uh, we hope that uh, uh, this kind of uh, cultural uh, uh, demonstration is uh, going to take place uh, not uh, all over Ukraine, and the people do understand what mm -hmm. the Japanese culture is. Since taking up the post of ambassador of Japan to Ukraine two and a half years ago, what are some of the challenges the Japanese embassy faces here in Ukraine? Uh, I think after my arrival, uh, uh, Ukraine is, is changing uh, uh, in a very, very drastic way. For example, of course, I came uh, just after the Maidan, so Ukrainian uh, really had uh, 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 I mean, a uh, decision that uh, Ukraine should be integrated with uh, EU, but I always say not e EU, but I, I, I say the free world, the, with the countries which share the democracy and the freedom of speech. Uh, so that means uh, uh, integration uh, of Ukraine includes uh, Japan. 
So I think uh, uh, Ukrainian is uh, drastically moving towards that end by reforming the uh, political system, mm -hmm. eradication of corruption, and, uh, you know, the, the more transparency to the e market, uh, so that, you know, foreign investment would come. So that's, I really, you know, feel since uh, uh, my arrival in Ukraine. And uh, the embassy challenge is to cooperate and to work together uh, for this uh, uh, end of reform. With regard to foreign investment, what sectors of the Ukrainian economy are you seeing Japanese multinationals invest in? The Japanese uh, big companies are interested in Ukraine. Uh, uh, the labor-intensive uh, industrial area. Uh, for example, uh, the Japanese uh, the companies such as uh, Fujikura and the Yazaki and the Sumitomo Electrics do have a big investment in the area of the wire hub. How, wire hub means uh, to make uh, uh, wires for automobile. Uh, mm -hmm. They just started, but uh, since this is a very advanced uh, uh, area of industry, but also this require, requires uh, uh, the labor-intensive work. So uh, this is one area Japanese uh, companies are very much interested in for the investment. And also many Japanese companies say that IT uh, in Ukraine has a, a big uh, future. Uh, in this area, uh, since uh, Ukraine do have a lot of uh, uh, highly educated, uh, highly, I mean, uh, IT uh, technicians, uh, the Japanese company wanted to invite them to, to Japan mm -hmm. to, to do this uh, business. So I think these are uh, main areas. Of course, the agriculture has a real future. Uh, and already uh, Japan do have a lot of trade in the area of agriculture, but uh, with regard to the investment in this area, it's, it's still very limited. So I hope mm -hmm. it would be uh, expanded in the future. Obviously, when we think of Japan, we think of uh, advanced engineering, Japanese railway system. What could Ukraine learn from Japan? What skills could they learn? What could Japan provide Ukraine in that way? Uh, the, if you look at the development of, of, of Japan, uh, uh, Japanese economy developed step by step. We didn't get the most, uh, uh, you know, the highly uh, capital intensive the industry mm -hmm. right away. No. The, if you look at the Japanese economic development in the past hundred years, it started with the labor intensive area such as the fabrics and then gradually go to the very uh, much capital uh, intensive areas such as automobile you know the economy uh, the, the the electric uh, appliances or space business mm -hmm. so uh, Ukraine should go through this uh, process so i think it's quite right for japan that uh, japanese company first start invest in the area uh, which requires uh, uh, the labor intensive such as, as I mentioned uh, uh, the 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 wire hub area uh, or agricultural sector and by doing that uh, uh, Ukraine would uh, develop this economy from the labor intensive to capital intensive I see so Ukraine really has to start off with manufacturing a lot of labor intensive work agriculture farming and then get to that level of capital intensive that we obviously see in yes. Japan. I see. Are there any products, uh, specific products that Ukraine is exporting to Japan? Yeah, because these days there are still the agriculture products and the iron ore. Uh, these are main uh, 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 products the Ukraine do uh, uh, export. But uh, surely, if, since uh, this wire hub uh, 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 business is started with Japanese in investment, so I think they are also going to Japan in, in the near future. So far, this uh, wire hub are targeting the European market, but mm -hmm. uh, go to Japan, because now Ukraine uh, has a high quality of labor workers and a reasonable uh, wage. That's a uh, main attraction for the Japanese business in Ukraine. I see. Speaking now for tourism, is Ukraine or vice versa, are Ukrainians traveling to Japan or Japanese tourism coming to Ukraine? Uh, I really wanted to, you know, increase the uh, tourist uh, industry, both in Ukraine and, 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 and Japan. 
and uh, the Japanese government uh, are making uh, efforts to promote the terrorist uh, 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 business in, in both ways. For example, uh, uh, New Japan do have a, a big uh, terrorist uh, uh, exhibition in September, so mm -hmm. I encourage the Ukrainian uh, uh, government, and not only central government or local government, to participate. Uh, in this exhibition taking place, uh, in, in, as I said, in September, in Japan. Already cities like uh, uh, not only Kiev, but Lviv, Odessa decided to participate. So promotion is very, very important. And also, uh, in order to increase uh, tourists uh, from Ukraine to, to Japan, the Japanese government wanted to have a further uh, uh, visa uh, facilitation mm -hmm. uh, 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 regime by introducing a much simplified way of the getting a visa. So uh, those are efforts uh, we are making. And uh, on the Ukrainian side, Ukraine also should sell Ukraine, as I said, to, to Japanese mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, uh, people, because uh, uh, with such a uh, uh, rich in history, in, in, in rich in culture, uh, Ukraine can offer a lot of uh, tourist attractions to, to uh, Japanese people, but uh, unfortunately, still, uh, Ukraine is, is the country which is not very well known. I mean, uh, to Japanese people, maybe people do know the name of Kiev, Odessa, uh, Lviv, but uh, that is all. I mean, uh, so I think also uh, Ukraine, and not only central government, but the local cities, uh, do make uh, all efforts. As I said, that by participating in the exhibition, tourism exhibition in Japan, or send a mission to Japan to attract more Japanese tourists to Ukraine. Well, speaking of tourist attractions, and my final question, I want to ask you, what are some of your favorite places to visit in Kyiv and in Ukraine? Uh, in, in Kyiv, uh, because uh, I and my wife uh, likes the walking, like walking, mm -hmm. so I quite uh, often go to the uh, botanical garden, both uh, old and the new, uh, spending a wonderful time walking around. Uh, so that's the, my our favorite place. But, uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, uh, about a two-hour drive, uh, the city called Umani, they have a beautiful so Sofia Park. Also, we like uh, uh, walking, so quite okay. often we go to Sofia Park for, for the walking. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Ambassador. Really appreciate it. Thank you much, Alex. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm Alex Gupta with UATV. I had the honor of speaking with the ambassador of Japan to Ukraine, Ambassador Shigeki Sumi. You're watching UATV.